Let's learn about callbacks, promises, and async await, which are the most important concepts in asynchronous JavaScript. And after completing this tutorial, you will able to write clean and maintainable asynchronous code in easy way. So first of all, let's understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. So here, I create index.html file, and in this JavaScript folder, we have script.js file. And I link this JavaScript file with our HTML file. Now let's copy this HTML file path and paste it in browser. And let's open console. Great. Now in this JavaScript file, I write console.log first line. And after that, another console.log last line. So this is the example of synchronous code or blocking code. Because when this first line is executed, the code is blocking and this last line has to wait until this first line finishes the task. In other hand, we have an asynchronous or non-blocking program. Let me show you the example of asynchronous code. So in JavaScript, we have one function called setTimeout. Now the first argument is function and the second argument is time for delay. Let's say 2000 milliseconds which is 2 seconds. So after 2 seconds, this function will run. So imagine, here we are getting data from database which takes 2 seconds. Now, can you guess what we get in console? Let's see. So I refresh the page and see we get first line and last line and after 2 seconds, we get this getting data from database. So first of all, this first line will execute. Then we call this setTimeout function. This function will schedule a task to perform in future. This doesn't block the code. And that's why we call it as non-blocking or asynchronous code. So when we run this code, we get this first line, then immediately last line, and then after 2 seconds, we get this line. So let's understand this with the real life example. So here is a one restaurant. The waiter come to table 1 and take order from them. Now waiter give this order to kitchen and then move to table 2 for another order. So this one waiter can serve more customers. So this is the example of asynchronous. Now there is another restaurant. The waiter come to table 1 and take order from them. Now waiter give this order to kitchen and then waiting for the food to be ready. He is not taking order from another table. So the restaurant system is going to block because of this. And this is the example of blocking or synchronous code. So synchronous or asynchronous is the type of code. Now here, let's make this example more realistic. So I create function called getStudent and move this timeout function inside this function. And we return here data of student. So in object, name to Bob and ID to one. Now let's call this function here and store this value in variable called student. And after that, we simply log this student. So we assuming that we are getting data from database and it takes two seconds. Save this and refresh the page. See, we get this student as undefined because this function is executing after two seconds. So when we call this function, this return data is not available. If you want to return a value from this function, then you have to write return statement here. But that's not what we want because we are getting data from database and it can take one second, two second or more than that. So that's why we use set timeout to add delay in this task. Now how can we get this student data here? So there are three methods to handle asynchronous code. Callbacks, promises, and async await. So let's start with callbacks. So what is callback? A callback is a function which is executed after another function finished execution. In other words, any function that we pass as an argument to another function, so we call that function as a callback. Let me show you. So I just add here id parameter and pass this id here. And in function, we pass 1. 
which I forgot to add. So to apply callback, we have to make little change in our function definition. So I add here argument callback. Now this callback is function. So we call this function for printing data. So after this console, we add callback and call this function here. Now pass this student data in this callback. And let's remove this return. We don't need it anymore. Now we are not returning anything from this get student function. So we no longer need to store this function value in variable. Now for second argument, we have to pass function. So I use here arrow function and move this console in this function. Now let's get this student details as student parameter. Now you might think this is confusing, but trust me, this is not. Let me explain you from start. So here we are calling this get student function and we pass this one as id. So after two seconds, we get console this line. And after that, this callback function will run, which we pass as second argument. So we get this object data in this student variable and then we console this student data. Simple as that. So save this and I refresh in browser. See, we get this first line, last line and then after two seconds, we get this line. So by using this technique, we don't get undefined data as we got previously. This callback function will run after two seconds. Now the funny part is, you already use callbacks in your code before this tutorial. So pay attention on the syntax of set timeout function. The first argument is function and second argument is time. So we know that when we pass function as a parameter in another function, then we call this function as callback. Now imagine here, we want to get another data from this student. Let's say subject information of this student. So I create another function called get subjects and pass here id which is student id. Now inside this function, we are assuming that we are getting data again from database. So I add here set timeout and pass function as first argument and two seconds. Now here, first I console getting subject of student and pass here this id. And I return subjects array like maths, science, computer, etc. Now let's call this function here and pass id which is student.id. But as we know, we don't get data immediately. So we use callback. So here we add callback and before return, we call that callback function and pass this array in this callback and remove this return. Now let's define the callback here and get this subjects array in this subjects variable. And after that, we can console these subjects. Save this and refresh the page. See, first we get first line, last line, then after two seconds, we get student data and after another two seconds, we get subjects data. Now there are some problem with callbacks. Let me explain you. So here, let's say we want to get marks of these subjects. So I quickly create one function called get marks and pass subject as parameter and callback. Now I just copy this set timeout function and paste it here. Let's change the console message which is getting marks of and pass here subject and pass marks in this callback, let's say 80. Now we call get marks and we pass here subject at zero index. And then we define our callback for print these marks. So write console.log mark. You see, there is a nested structure because we are calling multiple callback in one callback and this will make our code hard to maintain and understand. This issue is known as callback hell. This is not we have in asynchronous code. So if this all function are synchronous, our code look like this. You can see how this synchronous code is easy to understand and maintain. 
So to solve this callback help problem, we will make anonymous function to name function. In other words, as we declare here callback function, which is anonymous function because it's don't have name and define them separately as named function. So we define here function called display marks and we get mark as parameter and simply console this mark. So this display mark function is same as this callback. So let's replace it with our function. Now here we define function called display subjects and we get subjects as parameter here and copy these two lines from here and paste it inside our display subjects function. So this function is same as this callback. So we can replace it with display subjects. Now same for this callback. So we create new function called display student and get students data as parameter. And then we simply copy this and paste it here. So now we can replace this callback with this display student. Note that we are not calling this function. We just pass reference here. And see, we don't have that nested structure. So I copy this code in new file called callbacks.js. So you can refer this code in the future. Now this approach is not ideal, but it is better than callback hell. So there is a better way to deal with asynchronous code by using promises. So what is promise? A promise is an object which is able to hold the result of an asynchronous operation. In other words, promise is promise you to give you the result of the asynchronous operation or give you error. Let me explain you with example. So here I create new file called promises.js and link that with our index.html file. Now to create promise, we write new keyword and then promise. Now this promise function takes an argument which is function with two parameters. So here first parameter is resolve and second parameter is reject and arrow function. Now inside this, we write our asynchronous code. Here again we are assuming that we are getting data from database. So we write here set timeout and pass function and two seconds. Now imagine here we get our data from database. So I create one variable called student equals to object, let's say id to one and name to Bob. Now we write here resolve because we successfully get data and we pass here this student variable. Now let's store this promise in variable called promise and let's consume this promise. So we write promise which is the variable dot and here we have two main methods then and catch. So when we create promise it is in pending state and if we complete the asynchronous task then promise in fulfilled state and if there is an error then promise in rejected state. Here our promise fulfilled because we call here resolve. So when promise is fulfilled then we get our data in this then method. Now we store our data in result parameter and then simply console this result. Save this and see after 2 seconds we get this result. Now imagine for some reason we don't get data from database. So I comment out these lines and call here reject function. Now for better practice every time we create new error and pass our error message here. Save the changes and refresh the page. See we get this error here. Now let's see how to consume this error. So after this then method we add another method called catch and we get error and console.log this error. Save this and see we get that error here. So this is the implementation of promise in JavaScript. Now let me show you how we can convert our previous code in promises. So I have this code 
which have callback help problem. So let's start with this get student function. In this function, we return new promise and function with resolve and reject variables. And inside this arrow function, we move this code. Now let's remove this callback, we don't need it. And at the place of this callback, we add resolve. Now let's test this promise. So here, we call this getStudent function and pass id1. Now this getStudent function will return the promise. So we store this promise in variable called promise. Then we consume this promise and add here then method. Now we get this data in student parameter and simply console.log this student. Now let's comment out this code and I link this script file with HTML file. Save this and refresh the page. See, after 2 seconds, we get data. Now if you are follow along with me, then I have one task for you. I want you to convert these both functions into promises. So pause this video here and try it by yourself and after that watch this solution. So in this function, we return and just write here new and select this new promise. See, we get this boilerplate. By using these small tricks, you can boost your productivity. Now move this code inside this function and remove this callback and replace this with resolve. Now here, we also return new promise and move this code inside this arrow function. Now remove this callback and replace this with resolve. So we convert our all function in promise. Now let's see how to consume this nested promises. So we remove this console from here and call our next function which is get subjects and pass here student.id. Now we know that this function will again return promise. So we have to use then method. So outside of this then method, we add another then and store array in subjects. Now after that, we call get marks function and pass here our first subject. Now we get another promise here. So at the last, we add one more then method and store this mark and simply console.log this mark. Save this and refresh the page. See, it's running same as before. Now you can see when we use callbacks, our code looks like this nested structure. And after we apply promises, this same code looks like simple and inline. Now for good practice, we always add catch method, error and console.log error. So if we get error in any of these promises, then this single catch function will run, simple as that. Now we can even simplify these promises using async and await. So async and await help us to write asynchronous code like synchronous code. It's like a magic. Let me show you. So here, I call this function getStudent with id1. Now when we calling any function which is returning a promise, then we can await for that result and then store that result in variable like we did it in synchronous code. So let's store this in variable called student. Now similarly, we call the next function which is get subjects and pass here student.id. Now let's await for that and store that in variable called subjects. Now after that, we call our last function which is get marks and pass first subject from the student's array. Now let's also await for that and store this in mark variable. And at the end, we console.log this mark. Now you can see, by using this async and await operator, we can write asynchronous code looks like synchronous code. This is easy to understand and maintain in compared to callback as well as promises. We don't need to write this then method again and again. Now you might have question, where is async? 
So whenever we use await operator, we have to move that in function with async operator. Let me show you. So I simply add function here called display data and move this code inside it. Now at the beginning of this function, I add async. That's it. Remember, without this async, you can't use await in your code. It will give you error. And at the end, let's call this display data function. Now I comment out this promises part, save this and refresh the page. See, we get the same result. So with async and await, our code looks like synchronous, but under the hood, JavaScript engine convert this code in something like this code. So our code work like asynchronous code and looks like synchronous code. Simple as that. Now in promises, we handle error using this catch method. But how can we handle that error in this async and await approach? So for error handling, we use try and catch block. So I write here try and inside this try block, we move our all code. And after that, we add catch block and this catch block gets error object and we simply console.log this error. So in simple terms, if any error occur in this try block, then this catch block will run. So I comment out this mark variable for testing. Save this and refresh the page. And see, we get this error mark is not defined. So when we use async await, as a good practice, we always wrap our code in try and catch block. Let's recap what we learned. So callback function is the first method to handle asynchronous code. But in callback function, we face the issue called callback hell. Now after that, we see promises which simply promise you to give you the result of asynchronous operation or give you error. So to create promise, we use new promise. And inside it, we pass function with two methods, resolve and reject. Resolve means fulfilled and reject means rejected. But with promises, we also get this nested than methods. So after that, we see async and await operators. This async await is work like asynchronous code and looks like synchronous code. So when we call the function, we add await operator at the beginning. And this will help us to write code in synchronous way. And most important, you have to put this code into function with async operator. Without async, this await will not work. And that's why it known as async await. And last thing for error handling, we use try and catch block. Catch for errors and try for all code. So we place our all code in try block and we handle error in catch block. So I hope you learned asynchronous JavaScript. These concepts will help you a lot in future. You can download the cheat sheet of these concepts in description box. So whenever you want to revise something, you don't need to watch full video. If you want to learn any other topic, you can suggest me in the comment section. So see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.